first grade. Today we will be reading chapters five and six of Ada Twist. So if you remember, when we left off at the end of chapter four, Ada had ran into something and we were making predictions about what it could be. So on the ch beginning of chapter five, it says, things to remember, don't take Arthur's stuff. Smelly shoe, stinky shoe, tennis racket. Ada poked the thing with her finger. It was softer than a tree. Poke, 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 poke. Cut it out. It was noisier than a tree. Ada peeked under the bandana. She saw a pair of feet in striped socks. She knew those socks. It was Arthur. He stood there tapping his foot and pointing at his shoe. Hi, Arthur, said Ada, taking off the bandana. Did you come to help? No, he said in a cranky voice. I want my tennis shoes back. Stop using my stuff. But you have the stinkiest feet, said Ada. She meant it as a compliment. Arthur did not take it as a compliment. He frowned and tapped his foot faster. Look, said Ada, holding up the notebook. The hot shoe is stinkier than the cold one. I thought it would be. She smiled hopefully at Arthur, who frowned harder and crammed his foot right into the cold shoe. Ick, yelled Arthur as he pulled his foot out. A glob of frozen popsicle stuck to his sock. Why is there a purple popsicle in my shoe, he asked. Look at his shoe is leaking purple popsicle. Because we didn't have any red ones, said Ada. Do you think a red popsicle would make the shoe colder than a purple one? I could do an experiment to find out. Ada jotted a note. Arthur rolled his eyes. He picked up his left shoe and three hard-boiled eggs tumbled out. That's the hot shoe, said Ada. The boiled eggs heated it really fast. Ada could see that Arthur was not happy. Maybe he didn't understand what she was trying to do. She tried to explain. The hot molecules go really fast and bounce around, said Ada. Then the smells go like this. Ada pointed wildly this way and that and added a high pitch zoop zoop noise for special effect. And the cold molecules are slow, said Ada. She pointed slowly this way and that and added a low pitch fush, fush, sound. But they're all silent, said Ada, repeating the gestures silently. And they're all way faster than my fingers. And they are really tiny. There is no way that you could see them. And Arthur made a ugh kind of noise and rolled his eyes. He grabbed his sneakers by the laces and trudged back towards the house. There were lots of smell molecules in there, said Ada. They hit my nose and... And then the receptor cells and, and then goes to my brain. Zowie, and here, I'll draw you a picture. Arthur kept walking. Your stinky feet were made for science, Ada yelled as Arthur reached the house. The door slammed behind him. Hmm, said Ada. Arthur didn't get it. Ada knew what she wanted him to understand. But when she tried to explain it, all her ideas seemed to burst out at the same time, and then everything got jumbled. Why did that always happen to Ada? Ada sat beneath the tree and thought, Why did all of her ideas want to get out at the same time? Do other people's ideas do that? Could she do an experiment to find out? Could her friends Rosie Revere and Iggy Peck help her? Ada smiled. She loved working with her friends, and they always had great ideas. That would be a fun project to work on one day. The thought of that made her feel better. Ada went back to her notes. She was happy with the results of her stink experiment. She had hoped for more data, but even with only eight tries instead of dozens, she could see a pattern. The data seemed to confirm her hypothesis that the hot shoe was the stinkiest, but she needed more data to be sure. Ada was about to design a new hot stink experiment when a bird chirped in the tree above her. Uh-oh, Ada said. I almost forgot. It's birding time. Chapter 6. Crow, woodpecker, northern flicker, bahunkus? Ada grabbed her binoculars 
and came back to the tree. The great backyard bird count was only a few weeks away. Each year, on the same day, Ada joined people around the world who counted birds in their own backyards. Then they all shared the data they collected. That data told scientists how many birds there were and where they lived and where they traveled. Ada practiced identifying birds every day. She studied pictures and knew how many and knew many birds by sight. But she wanted to know bird calls too. Ada listened to the birds in the tree. Caw, 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 crow, she said. Knock, 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 woodpecker. Tap, 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 northern flicker. Oops, said Ada. I don't know that one. She listened again. Oh, no. Oh, no, said Ada. What kind of bird sounds like that? She looked through her binoculars. Zowie, said Ada. That's not a bird. That's not a plane. That's a bahonkus? Ada was right. A bahonkus. A very big bahonkus. And it belonged to a very skinny man with a very big mustache and a very big pair of pants. They were the biggest pants Ada had ever seen. They were fluffy and puffy and they were floating above the tree. And that wasn't just any man. That was Uncle Ned. Ada turned to see her friends, Rosie Revere and Iggy Peck, running towards her. They were shouting and waving their arms. Stop that uncle, yelled Rosie. Ada looked up and a long rope dangled from... You see the birds? And Uncle Ned and his pants are all blown up. And he's in the sky. A long rope dangled from Uncle Ned's waist. It snagged on a branch at the top of the tree. Rosie and Iggy skidded to a halt next to Ada. They were out of breath and their faces were bright, bright red. Hi, said Ada. Thanks for catching Uncle Ned, said Rosie. We've been chasing him all over Blue River Creek. Why is he flying around, asked Ada. Is it an experiment? I love experiments. Is it an experiment about flying, wind, birds, leaves, clouds, weather, is it? It's about getting me down, yelled Uncle Ned. We're trying, said Rosie. Why are his pants floating, asked Ada. Are they filled with gas? I heard that, called Uncle Ned. They're filled with helium gas, which is lighter than air, said Rosie. I made them for him when I was younger. Sometimes he wears them on a walk, said Iggy. Though I guess it's a float, because someone else is doing a walking. They hold the rope so Uncle Ned doesn't fly off. Flying around in helium pants is dangerous. It was hazardous. It was perilous. It was also really cool. Uncle Fred was holding the rope today, said Rosie. And then he saw a... Uh, let me guess, said Ada. Did Uncle Fred see a snake? Rosie nodded. Everyone knew Uncle Fred. He was a zookeeper in Blue River Creek. Everyone also knew that Uncle Fred loved snakes, and they loved him. They found him everywhere he went, and it always led to trouble. He picked up the snake, Rosie said, and... And he let go of the rope, said Ada. What kind of snake was it? An annoying one, said Uncle Ned. Get me down from here. And that is the end of chapter 6 today. I'll see you tomorrow.